This is the weekly sales meeting for April 2nd, 2022. My name is Chris Fleming. You can reach me at chris at cdmediaconsulting.com or go to our website at cdmediaconsulting.com. Today's topic, 10, 5, 2. Some years back, I came up with this method of prospecting and planning for my outside sales franchise. I based it on the idea that the best source of new business comes from my existing customers, and my second best source of new business comes from the competitors of those customers. New business is the lifeblood of any sales franchise. It is especially so with those involved in media sales. As we have established, if we relied only on what we have now, we could be out of business in five years. To grow our sales franchise, we need to be filling our pipeline with opportunities. And some of that opportunity is known, and some will be unknown. Some will come from brand new contacts. Some will come from expanding the opportunities for existing customers. And the second one is easier than the first. It requires a different conversation. You might not agree with my premise. That is okay. I am sure we can agree that prospecting and business development are key elements to success. It is true on the first day of the month or the last day of the month. Blocking time for prospecting and business development is a must-do. That is, if you have designs on being a successful seller. Consistency makes this process easier rather than harder. It is the discipline that separates elite sellers from the rest of the pack. This dedication to the continuous development of new sources of revenue ensures you will always have a pipeline full of business and the pipeline will be in various stages of the process this is a healthy sales franchise many do not know where to start many do not have a process they have a wish my suggestion is to start with what you know create a profile of your most likely customer by looking at your customer base what do they have in common is it the type of business the relative size of it the time in business their location or their product offering what makes them the best customers for your sales franchise. At the same time, I would make a list of negative traits that would be the opposite of the best list. I would post these at my desk as a cautionary tale. Think about all the problem customers you have had and what their commonality might be. Is it a personality type, a business type, or economic conditions that cause them to have a bad experience? These may not be bad prospects for the future, but for now, we will concentrate our efforts on our ideal customer. One of the reasons our current customers are the best source of new business is they will give us a roadmap to making more like them. It is a pathway to finding others with similar characteristics. We identify them by profiling their best traits. We are organizing a search party to find others like them. It is not the only way to develop more great customers, but the best path to follow, in my opinion. Profile your best and worst and use them as a guide to find more like them or find more like them to stay away from. Both are good uses of your time. There is a lost art in prospecting. It is the referral asking those that do business with you to refer you to someone they know. For some reason, this is an awkward exchange. And because of that, we make it more awkward when we should make it part of our natural sales conversation. We should think we have the right to ask. We have earned it by doing an exceptional job in serving our current customers. It is something we should practice. We should make it part of the sales process. After you have earned the right, add it to your natural conversation. I will say it this way. If you believe we've done a good job for you and have helped you with your business, with your permission, I would like to add your positive referral to our library of satisfied customers. If there are one or two people you would be willing to recommend us to, I would appreciate the introduction. This is a positive conversation, and it is a voluntary statement that you can revisit often. Add it to your arsenal. You don't have to do what I do, but you should find a way to make the ask so it is not awkward, and we will be able to revisit this action in the future. There are a couple of concepts I have used with good success. One is looking at horizontal, the competitors, prospecting, and the other is vertical, suppliers and customers prospecting. When I identify a good prospect or have a good customer, I like to look at their nearest competitor as a prospect. I will look up and down to see if someone in their supply chain or consumer chain could be a good prospect also. Each prospect or customer can generate at least four more. At least they are businesses I can put through my test of ideal customers, and I can test them against the list of not-so-ideal customers. What is more, my current customer might help me navigate the water. They can give me the roadmap to get to the right person at each business. 
having the referral talk can open doors to competitive and related business prospecting. Make sure you have a referral conversation with every customer. You can even have it with people who turn you down. Once you have it, you can continue to come back to that well every time you get together. From that framework, we will either get one or two more leads, or we can move to the video testimonial, which is an effective sales tool. Either way, we have a reinforcing net positive exchange that solidifies our value proposition to our customers. After this exchange, if I don't get one or two leads, I will probe for extra opportunities. As we stated, our best source of new business is from our current customers. Could they be buying another product or service from us? We have addressed depth of assortment, but that is something we should be doing. We should have an action plan or growth plan for every customer. We often don't ask, because once we have a sale in place, especially a long-term sale, asking the customer to buy something else is petrifying. What if they cancel? I would ask the converse question, which is, what if they bought that product from somebody else? Did we lose our seat at the advisor's table? To manage that process and drive a positive outcome, I developed a prospecting plan. Call this plan 10, 5, and 2, and I used it as a way to grow my sales franchise. The first number is 10. Apply 10 to the accounts that have the headroom to buy one more thing from me. 10 existing accounts who have additional needs. The 5 would apply to new target accounts that fit our ideal profile. They may be competitors, suppliers, or referrals from our current customers. Either way, they are targets for us as they fit our profile of what a successful account looks like. Finally, two. These are the white whale accounts. It doesn't mean we are Captain Ahab searching for Moby Dick. It is more like these are long-range, big-source accounts. They have the potential to be A-list accounts for our business. We are not spending all of our time on them, but we work on them methodically. If I'm a seller building my account list, I might flip-flop the 10 and the 5 designations. I would find 10 new accounts and then look for 5 that have headroom to grow. But adhering to this discipline every week would make me a better seller because I have a solid plan. What happens when we have success? When we convert a 5-lister or the white whale, this is where we need to take a look at our own sales franchise. We need to look at our own inputs and outputs. Logic would say we could replace a converted account with another prospective account, but mathematics would argue with that logic. The rate of replacement for our prospecting list needs to be at the rate of conversion from suspects to prospects to customers. If it takes us 10 calls to make one appointment, then that is the replacement number. When we convert an appointment, we need to add 10 prospects back to the funnel. That is the misstep many make in managing their sales franchise. We don't follow the rule for the rate of replacement. The same is true when we make a sale from 10, 5, or 2. Pay attention to your personal rate of replacement so you know what to put back into the sales funnel. And remember, there is zero penalty for overperformance. Failing to add back at the replacement rate will leave you scrambling in 90 days. As we have said, winter pays for summer. To manage your sales franchise, don't focus on anyone else's metrics but yours. Beth might convert one out of every seven, but you are one out of 13. Pay attention to your 13, not Beth's seven. When adding new prospects, go back to those two lists. You know, the one with the ideal customer and the not so ideal customer. Pay attention so you are not playing the numbers game, but playing the best prospect game. If you are adding quality to your funnel rather than adding names, your output will be more impactful. If you dump a bunch of names on a list, you will likely get something less than desirable at the end. By being proactive, you can stay ahead of the curve on your sales funnel. Your pipeline can be full of customers in various stages of development, rather than starting from scratch every week. This is one of the big tasks for outside sellers, especially ones that have to develop their own leads. You are responsible for filling your pipeline. Be proactive and be more successful. When things are not breaking your way, double your efforts. We don't get the luxury of coasting. See if you can incorporate this into your prospecting plan. Find 10 existing accounts that have headroom. Increase their buying power with you. Then find five brand new target accounts you will work on this month to get to the finish line. They may come from referrals or horizontal prospecting from your current customers. 
and then add two white whale accounts. These are long-term developmental accounts where you move the ball up the field this month. If you are newer and not as established, flip the 10 and the 5 until you get to your destination. It is a way to manage your sales franchise and never miss a beat by keeping your pipeline filled. Remember your rate of replacement. Make sure that is based on your own conversion rate, not somebody else's. We are only responsible for our own sales franchise. Make sure we are managing it according to our own metrics. They can be 10, 5, and 2. My new book, You Can't Lead from the Back of the Room, Nor Should You, is now available on Audible as an audiobook download. If you like what you have heard here today, please consider downloading a copy or two. You can always send one to a friend. Go to cdmediaconsulting.com right now and follow the instructions to order.